Good morning, everyone. This is Professor Vishal Gupta at the USC Marshall School of Business. This video is for BUAD 425, Data Analysis for Decision Making. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to fit a logistic regression to the loans data set using Jump. So to get started, let's please go to Jump. You'll see that when you start up Jump, it opens up a number of windows that are not particularly useful. You can go through these uh, tips of the day if you'd like to at some point on your own, or use the beginner tutorial that's shown here. I'm just going to close this up, go to File, Open. And on Blackboard, you will have found that there is a file called loansclean.jmp, which has the jump version of the loans data set. Notice this is different than loansclean.csv, which is the comma-separated version of the data set. We want to use the JMP one for jump. I'll open that up. It looks very much like our Excel spreadsheet from class. You can actually manipulate it in a lot of ways, very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. For example, I'm going to change this full first column by double clicking on it and rename it default. The title not fully paid tends to confuse me. You'll notice also that the first 3,000 ish rows have these little no smoking symbols next to them. That's to indicate that these rows are part of the training, the testing set, and I asked Jump to exclude them earlier before I loaded the file onto Blackboard. If you have some questions about what the testing set is and why we use it, you should check your notes uh, and our slides from class. If anything still doesn't make sense, please swing by office hours and we can chat about it. Now to fit a logistic regression, I'm going to go to Analyze, Fit Model, And I'm going to see a screen like this. What I would like to predict is whether or not someone defaults. So I'll drag default into the Y variables. And I'm going to use all of these variables in order to decide that. So I can either select them one by one to drag them down here. Or if you use shift, you can actually sub select all of them at the same time. I can drag the block of them to down here. And I will confirm that the personality I'm going to use is going to say nominal logistic because I want to perform a logistic regression. I hit run and jump generate some output. So we talked about this output a great deal in class. Uh, you should be able to read sort of the most important portions of it. For example, the R squared for the full model is here at 5.7%. The p-value for the full model is negligibly small. Uh, if I scroll further down, I should see this section parameter estimates. These are the weights for each of the features. This is the intercept and the score. And we can see the p-value for each of the features is sort of negligibly small. If you have any questions on what these words mean, the r-squared, the p-value, how to interpret them, how to interpret the intercept, you should again check your notes from class and the slides. And if anything is still unclear, please come to office hours or uh, ask in class. All right, that said, we then now have this fit of our logistic regression. We can use the weights directly to compute scores for new observations, or we can ask Jump to do it for us. To get Jump to compute the score for each observation, I can go here to this red triangle, click the red triangle, and inside you'll see a save probability formula. Before I click this, I just want to point out the last column right now we see over here is revolving balance. If I instead click Save Probability Formula, Jump adds a number of columns to my Jump spreadsheet. These columns are not named particularly helpful things, so let me just rename them. Lin1 is actually what we've been calling in class the score. And you can see down here the formula for it. It's the intercept plus each of the weights times the corresponding feature. So the weight times the feature, weight times the feature for all of them. I hit OK, that's that. Probability 1 is the probability of default. And this is obtained by placing this score in the logistic function that we talked about from class. So for example, the first person in my data set has about an 11% probability default. The second one has about a 20% probability of default. The second column is just 1 minus this number. It's the probability that he pays. And most likely default is a column that I highly recommend you ignore. This is the column that Jump would assign as a classification, 
And the way that jump does this is it looks at the probability of default and says, if this number is bigger than 50%, then the person defaults. Otherwise, he will pay. So you'll see for most people, or maybe all people in the data set, jump says that they will pay. This is clearly a very bad way to think about this classification because of the asymmetric costs that we talked about in class. So we're going to want to replace these predictions with a better prediction ourselves using a different threshold. How do we do that? Well, there is a way to do it in jump, although it is a little bit kludgy. So I instead recommend that students export and do this in Excel. The way to do this to export is I can go on a Mac to File, Export. And if I was on a Windows machine, I would go to File, Save As. On a Mac, when you hit Export, you'll see the different options. You can click Excel. On Windows, when you go File, Save As, just make sure you change the type of the file to an Excel workbook. I can then click Next. It'll ask me where I'd like to save it. I'll save it as Loans Clean Video. Export it. Once I've done that, I can fire up Excel. I'll open up the file I just saved. And you'll see these are my 10,000 dish people. This is the score for each person that was computed by jump. And this is the probability that came out of that logistic regression. Now again, I don't like this particular column that jump created most likely default because comparing to 50% is a silly threshold. So let me just get rid of that. And I can say, well, what threshold should I use? Well, we talked a little bit in class that you should pick a threshold that optimizes the profit for the firm or looks at the correct number of loans being given out. In general, a threshold that connects to some element of the business. For now, just for the sake of illustration, I'm going to think about using a probability threshold because it's nice and easy to interpret. And I'll say that anyone who has over a 0.05% chance of defaulting uh, should we, we should label as a default. So I'll put my linear predictions here. And I'll say if the probability they default is greater than 5%, I call them a defaulter. And otherwise, I call them uh, pay. I can send that all the way down, and we see the various predictions here. Of course, using 0 0.05 was just up to us. I could have chosen 0.11 instead, or something like that. And what I really should do at this point is compute the confusion matrix for this prediction and make an estimate of the profits or the number of loans being given out or something similar in order to figure out what a good probability threshold should be. Okay, as one last thing, you may notice if you're watching carefully that in this video, I used a threshold on the probability to make the classification, i.e. I looked at whether or not the probability that someone defaulted uh, was bigger or smaller than this threshold. In class, I did something slightly different with the loans data set. In particular, I picked a threshold for the score. So I think in class I picked something like minus 11. And then when I did my predictions, I said something like, if the score is bigger than minus 11, I predict default. Otherwise, I predict K. So you might be confused and ask, well, Professor, should I use the probability and use a threshold on the probability? Or should I use the score and use a threshold on the score? As we talked about in class, though, the logistic function allows you to go between scores and probabilities and from scores, sorry, from scores to probabilities or back from probabilities to scores in a one-to-one -one way. So in fact, these two methods are exactly the same as long as you pick this probability threshold and this score to correspond to one another. So how do you do that? Well, if you really wanted to, you could use the formula from class to compute to convert between one and the other. So for example, if I have a probability threshold of 0.0522, I can use the formula from class to decide that 
uh, this corresponds to a score of minus 0 0.289906, a score threshold. So if I made my threshold that, you can see here that all of the predictions are the same. And in the same way, if I wanted to find out what the probability threshold for a score of minus 11 was, I could also do that instead. Now, while there are some formulas to go back and forth here, and I gave them to you in the slides, I don't actually think that this is super important uh, when you are doing business analytics in real applications. The idea is just to be consistent. Pick a threshold either for the probability or for the score, and then make sure you do your predictions with that corresponding threshold. So if your threshold is meant for the probability, make sure that you're looking at the probability column. If your threshold is meant for the score, make sure that you're looking at the score column. In general, if this is confusing to you, please do ask in class, and I will be happy to clarify. Okay, that's it for using logistic regression to fit to the loans data set. If you have any questions about what this means, how to compute the confusion matrix, etc., from this point onwards, uh, please do take a look at your notes and some of the other videos on Blackboard. If there still are questions, please bring them to class or come to office hours. Thank you.